let's just let we're just gonna do a quick uh, yeah, i'll read uh, i'll read here in one second i just want to go over this because it's nate if you guys don't know who nate is nate is a boss okay Nate's a boss, okay? He's my favorite anime character. I don't know if you know this, but I'm pretty sure... Oh, hey, wait a second. Oh, no. I just realized that my uh, Vim plugin's broken. No! There you go. Nate, all right? My favorite anime character, Nate. I've always appreciated him. Commonly referred to as N9. You may have heard of him. All right. How to get into software. I end up talking to a lot of people about how to get into software development. Is it weird that I have a picture of him on my computer? Is that strange? Should I be worried about that? So I'm creating this guide. This guide is by no means comprehensive and is light on specifics. This is by design as the vast majority of learning you will need it to do is self-directed for your career. Okay, this is interesting. Additionally, this guide is much more focused on back-end development, though you'll be exposed to both back and front-end. Okay. Number one, install Arch Linux on your main computer. All right, people, we're going for single, okay? We're going for broke. Let's see where we're going. I'm loving this, all right? And use it for all computer tasks. Let's go. Let's go, Nate. I picked Arch not because it is the most perfect or the best, but because it requires you to see what's going on in your computing environment. Okay, so this actually is a good argument if you have the time. This is a good argument. Uh, this is to see what your computer does at a little lower level and to see how a more modular computing environment works. You will learn how to use the command line and likely get some experience writing shell scripts to tailor your personal computing to your own preferences. Additionally, whether or not you end up sticking with Arch or Linux at all, you'll find the Arch Wiki to be a useful reference for debugging software products. Okay, interesting. I mean, this is a this is a tough one take. This is a super tough one take. Like, take one hot AF. Read, automate the boring stuff. This is a free Python book that includes instructions and explanations on how to automate some general tasks using Python programming languages. Uh, these programmers are let's see, these programs are simple but powerful and will be a good starting point to program away some repetitive tasks in your own life. And you will learn the basics of programming and see some of the power of writing your own programs to solve. I mean, this is just a good philosophy to have, right? And not only this, I feel like there's like a second one. I'm I'm a, I'm assuming he hasn't talked a lot about it yet, but there's this other concept which is how to write good scripts and one of the best ways to write a good script is to allow for files or standard in to be part of the input and just always having this notion of standard in to standard out or file in to standard out or file in to file out is just one of these really beautiful ways like all whatever the four combinations i think i forgot one file in to stand a uh, standard out uh just knowing how to write scripts well so you can make things more modular it's just really, really nice uh, habit to be in. Honestly, some of my favorite things I've been uh, just trying lately is to build more, you know, buildable uh, scripts. F f standard in and standard out as a file. Yeah, but sometimes you also pass in a file. That's not number one. Uh, let's see. Your three choices are NeoVim, my choice, Emacs, if you want to learn another programming language, and VS Code. This one is the uh, that is most used in professional circles. At the end of the day, your work and play as a software development is 90% editing text files, and you should be extremely effective at editing text files. This should be more personal to you than your computer, as, uh, see, is, as you will find your productivity is directly tied to your abilities in the text editor. I 100% agree with this. I can do so many things fast because I know my editor really, really well. This is a very great thing to keep in mind. You should at least learn your tools the best you can. If you don't know your tools, you will always be in this weird spot where you're kind of flailing around a little bit. I just think this is great. So yeah, slide into the author's DMs. Absolutely. And I like that he said you can really, like, here's three good options. He doesn't say Helix. You can't really customize Helix as much. Uh, it's a good way to put it. Create a profile on GitHub and learn the basics of version-controlled Git. 100%. This is great. Okay, so actually this advice, I thought it was going to be a pure meme right here, but it's turned actually really good. This is this is really good. 
Create, let's see, uh, from here on out, you will put all your code and things in your GitHub so potentially employers will see that you are productive. Uh, Git is a difficult program to understand and work with, and much of it will not make sense. Uh, use it regularly and, and practice in reading up, and you'll eventually grow to understand enough to use it in, coll in a collaborative environment. A good resource. Actually, a very good point, which is the first time you use version control, it does seem a little confusing, right? First time I used it, I was a little kind of like, what the hell's going on? But then once you start using it, becomes easy. Okay. Learn Markdown. Great advice. I use Mario. Let's see. Uh, I use it to write documentation notes and pretty much anything that have been written on. Pay yep. Yep. This is useful because it's a common format in software circles that can be rendered in another program more or less. Uh, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. This will be a main way of writing documentations. This is good advice. This is good advice. This is actually no one ever just says learn Markdown. Absolutely. Start lurking on Hacker News and Lobsters. Oh, gosh. Not lobsters. Uh, these are places where anyone from, let's see, from college students to CEOs hang out to discuss tech topics. You'll see technologies come and go, people complaining about things that are objectively good and defending things that are objectively bad. <laughs> Along the way, you'll read thousands of blog posts about programming and technologies old and new. This is where you will learn the in-group terminology and concepts. That's actually a really cool idea. The, the, there is a whole like, you know, vernacular to being a software engineer. It's true. We say things such as atomic, right? People don't use the term atomic to mean small, okay? At least in layman's terms, right? You know what I'm saying? It's just, this is unusual. Write a website from scratch and host it on a server somewhere. This is actually good advice. It really doesn't matter what it's for or how you go about making it. As long as you do it from scratch, you'll need the basic understanding of how websites are put together and how to put them on a server. DigitalOcean Doplet running a Ubuntu is fantastic for this, as well as AWS EC2 Nano Instance. This will expose you to many concepts and ideas that are useful in getting your software out to your own computer, let's see, of your own computer and able to use on others. Yeah, I'm specifically not giving instructions on how to do this to force you to find out there are plenty of posts on the web yeah this is great advice i've always i've said this a bajillion times write a cli program write a web server like those two things alone are going to teach you just a lot about general software terms read the go book the go programming language is new uh, let's see, is a newly common language in corporate business programming in which can get most programming tasks done is one of the best languages for getting a good job in the current year there are plenty of other programming languages that are out there equally good choices but i think this is a good place to go from python i might recommend node as a second language node is actually a, a runtime javascript would be the second language if you really enjoy writing websites and really don't care much for the python stuff i don't have a reference for node like i do for go so you'll be on your own for finding a good, good book I, I mean, I do agree with this language. If you're trying to get a job right now and you don't want to use JavaScript, Go is a good alternative. You pretty much have Go and Java if you really want to get a job from 0 to 60 as fast as possible, right? Really, if you learn, if you learn JavaScript, Java, and Go, and you, knew it, and, you go, and you know it pretty well, you can get a job pretty quick. Honestly. Research functional programming and write a program. Interesting. I don't care what program the program does. Functional programming is a totally different paradigm from imperative, which is um, what you've mostly been doing so far. Many of the concepts will carry over from one paradigm to another, and gaining another perspective on programming will, will be infinitely useful. I fully agree with this. I fully agree with this. I just never want to write functional programming. I just got to learn. I, okay, I'm going to have to learn one. I've never done it, but I fully agree with this statement there. Lee code. Do some of these problems. Like 20 will be enough to see a common ways people write performant code and will expose you to many of the common algorithms that will be included in programming interviews. A lot of people overdo them and never uh, uh, end up getting practical programming knowledge. So you'll want to avoid becoming a career Lee coder. Again, just based advice. I mean, personally, I throw in there, take the Primogen's free course on algorithms and data structures because algorithms and data structures are more useful to in the interview than Lee code problems. Okay. Additional musings. You need to write a program or make a website. The number of instructions are, uh, above are not enough to get the job. You'll need to have some examples of code you've written along with the experience of having written some code. Coming up with programs or websites to write, dif uh, let's see, to write is difficult. The only way I've been able to reliably do this is examining what happens in my own computing experience and finding things that annoy me. I love this. So that's my big motivation is always solving things that annoy me. One of my favorite problems to solve is changing my desktop wallpaper with a keyboard command. It's not groundbreaking or technically impressive, but it's something that makes my computing ex uh, experience some small amount more pleasant. The more important thing is, isn't that you make wild programs that change the world, but you get experience writing programs. 
it's good advice. This is just good advice. Not everything has to be groundbreaking. This is the thing I hear the most from you guys. All right, you guys, you DJs right here. This is like the number one thing I hear the most from you, uh, which is, okay, should I commit to React or to this? And it's like, how about neither? Build something. Build anything. Can you complete it? Try to get completed, right? Try to do something. Honestly, it is amazing just to do something as opposed to just constantly, constantly, constantly be just striving to do the most greatest thing, the most grandiose thing. What will you do? You'll end up probably getting defeated. You'll probably end up not finishing, and then you'll have nothing to show for it. Whereas if you at least do something, even if it's small, you've had the full experience from building something that has only an idea to the point where it's considered completed. That's why also I don't change Harpoon. Harpoon for me is completed. I've done what I want on it, and I really don't want to make changes anymore. Like, it is exactly what I want. The problem with me is, I know, but you have the ability to talk about it. You got experience from doing it. And that is the most important part, is getting experience. Experience is the most important facet of all this. None of this has anything to do with, uh, like, I'm now going to be the greatest website builder. No. You're going to want to specialize at some point, and it won't be in website building. It will probably be something more specific. But the best way to learn what you like is just to make shit. Just make anything for a little while. It's actually pretty nice. I love Harpoon. It's my, I use it all the time. The order of the above list is not strict. Uh, I usually only like mark one or two files, honestly, these days. Uh, each one of these steps do not take the same amount of time, and they're not meant to uh, over... Yep, awesome. This by no means an exhaustive list. Let's see on. Yeah, we'll keep on going. I hope uh, that in researching and completing the tasks above, you'll have gained enough knowledge about the other aspects of programming to make yourself a well-rounded programmer. Do not be afraid to go down rabbit holes of learning about things that seem to pull you from the loose, pa uh, loose path I've laid out. That's great advice. You know, let the rabbit hole happen. That's where the best learning happens. Let the rabbit hole happen. What's Harpoon? Uh, this is Harpoon. So... I have two pages in this project, and there they are right there. And I bound them to a singular keys. So I can just go back and forth. When I quit and I open this back up, I can go back and forth between those and notice where my cursor's at. Do you see something about my cursor? Where's my cursor at? Same place as it was when I left it. Harpoon. Harpoon's really cool. I love Harpoon. It's my own, it's my best plugin I've ever written. And it only has one thing. And I, I honestly, I've been not allowing changes to go in because I'm very afraid that people are going to, I don't want it to change, right? Har based. Yeah. Like, I like it. I don't need, I don't want more integration. The only thing I want to do is think about like an inventing system for people to write their own plugins. Uh, these are things uh, where, let's see, yeah, where you find your niche. This is great advice. The rabbit hole is where your niche is. Niches is, is how you get paid well. Think about that for a second. The rabbit hole is where you find your niche. Niches is, is how you get paid well. People, you don't, like, here's the deal. If all you ever do is just incorporate Tailwind, incorporate React, go serverless, build a small application, and that's what you do, there is a limit to that pay because that is not necessarily a complicated task. It's just not. But let's just say you go really far into one of those aspects. All right, whatever it is, and you become a master of that domain, you will be able to be hired for that one task because you are the best at it or one of the best at it. Niching is really important. And it doesn't have to be super tight, right? It doesn't have to be like, I am the best, you know, whatever it is, right? I've helped write solid JS. That You don't have to be that niche. For me, my niche is to look at a problem, see what tools could be made, and try to guess what is the best tool to make and be able to make a rough draft of that tool in a very small amount of time. That is my specialty. That's it. It's not it's it's not fantastic, right? That's that's not something that, you know, it only works at big companies, but it's a lot of fun for me and I love doing it. You know? A really and if you can be super niche, you can get paid a lot. Honestly, I'm really, really good at not knowing what to do. Uh, you're the dad I've never really had. Oh, thanks, son. All right, uh, these tasks will not be done instantly. I expect someone to have done enough to get an entry-level job after about a year or so of doing the things on this list. Yeah, I would say that that's actually not a bad idea. Uh, the uh, You may take more uh, time or less time. That is not a problem. Yep. 
That is not a problem. You can ask me for help if you want to. Oh, come on. This song was so good. Why would you do that? I don't care who you are. If you found your way to this post and you want some help, feel free to reach out to me. Oh, oh, you want to be reached out to, Nate? Well, let's just go over here and go like this. All right. Hey, uh, Deejins, his name is Nate. Go get him, everybody! <laughs> Got yeah, him. Honestly, this is a great article. This is actually probably the best article I've read in a long-ass time. Really, this is like one of the best articles I've read in a long-ass time because it's finally an article that's not te like, you know, the previous article, the, the the Get Atomic Commits was like, this is the only way to do it. If you're not doing it, you're denying what is actually best. He's not even saying that. He's literally just saying, hey, Learn how to use a computer, learn how to automate, master your text editor, make sure you're on the social scene so you can interact with, uh, you know, with uh, with version control, learn Markdown because that's how devs communicate, L read articles and become good at just the lingo people use, get some experience doing a full stack, go read some useful books, learn a different paradigm, be good enough at leak code to solve some problems. And guess what? You're going to get hired. You're going to be good enough. Like this is great advice. This is great advice. Honestly, I, I'm shocked. It does help a lot, yeah. This is solid advice. I'm afraid to look at other blog posts because what happens if I hate Nate afterwards? You know what I mean? What happens if I hate him afterwards? I honestly, when, when it started off with use Arch... I literally thought there's no way this is going to be a good article. Blew me out of the water. Have you tried it? No, I haven't tried the new one. 